uh, very good morning to one and all present virtually present here at the outset sorry for the delay uh, actually there are two reasons one our principal was sent up with some uh, well directory function in other uh, program and uh, some technical issues with our get no problem it's all right and on behalf of iqac i congratulate the department of plant biology and plant biotechnology presidency college for conducting this international virtual conference i must appreciate the hod botany dr city professor because he has already conducted a webinar and he encouraged the staff members to conduct some quiz and due to his constant encouragement now this international webinar is being arranged we already announced that IQS ya presidency college is ready to extend the technical support to the departments and the individuals who want to conduct the webinars like this and the botany is one of the leading department we can say that it is the first department in utilizing the chances given to them i appreciate them i appreciate all the department uh, members especially uh, dr uh, kritika madam the organizing secretary of the program she has been toiling herself right from the beginning day one starting by designing a very wonderful certificate I mean uh, invitation and till certificate also and she is ready to work hard even in the coming days to get the certificate distributed and uh, to attend the queries anything from the participant everything so i congratulate the enthusiastic kritika madam with the few informal words now i formally go for the function and i invite dr cv sitbabu sir the hod plant biology and plant yes, biotechnology yes, to deliver the welcome note sir sitbabu sir please sir good morning good morning to all of you so the international virtual conference on novel biotechnological approaches to combat emerging diseases with a special focus on sars associated corona virus therapeutics has been designed by the organizing secretary of our department and the principal respected principal in charge hods of our own college iqac coordinator dear participants wish you all a happy morning it's a great occasion for us to stay connected because this corona virus problem has made us to be distant physically distant but the digital technology brings us together to keep away the stress and share our knowledge in order to conduct this uh, international virtual conference i was uh, really struggling to conduct this program but fortunately the iqac coordinator has come out with a plan to extend the technological support to the entire college so as all can benefit and conduct such programs our principal in charge dr war devanathan is a, a really positive and encouraging professor consent for conducting such is to be really thanked and up welcome our uh, principal who is very strict. he is a master of all subjects and he can give a lecture anytime anywhere such a nice person so i welcome you sir to this international virtual conference i welcome our college hods the council members who have been always supporting for the cause of the college the college which is able to maintain its international repute i should uh, admit that by a friendly and a very encouraging supporting iqc coordinator dr m abdul rahim appreciable for his uh, qualities of uh, supporting us supporting all the college faculty members for academic and research purposes 
he not only helps the staff but also the students so he is loud to work he is really amazing and i welcome the iqac coordinator dr abdul rahim on this occasion and the participants the participants from various states almost around uh, i think eight states are there and the participants a number of participants are <clears throat> around 1000 it is a overwhelming response and supporting all of them in the live webinar is difficult so the iqac department has arranged for the youtube uh, facility also so i welcome all the participants and the organizing secretary who has been working all through the month i should say she has been planning the organizing secretary dr n kritika of our department who is an asset to our department who readily accepts challenges who ventures into any such academic activity boldly without fear single handedly i should say the resource person dr saravanan muthu pandian is an excellent uh, researcher a product of madurai kamra university did his phd in srm university and uh, the key words to describe him can be medical microbiology novel biotechnology novel drug therapy novel uh, drug discovery you can keep on like uh, this because he has been in the updated field of designing drugs and delivering drugs how to deliver drugs so during this pandemic when we are all panic how to tackle the corona virus is a big problem but the stress created can be overcome only by opening up our minds and listening to the research updates hence is his readiness to share his knowledge is really useful to all the participants i suppose all the participants are lucky to attend this lecture from the right right person on the right platform conducted by the right the college and the right department which are all of great repute i welcome one and all thank you thank you very much sir uh, now i invite our beloved principal in charge dr war devanathan sir to deliver the presidential address a very good afternoon to one and all present here my congratulations are due to the department of plant biology of the reputed i say most reputed college presidency college probably the following words following a few words i utter for the participants to know among category of arts and science colleges our college stands the fifth place by nirf team it is a national institutional ranking framework and the ranking is done for the colleges of the entire country so that our college is ranked as the fifth college first four places are secured by colleges of delhi itself now barring delhi all over india we can very proudly claim that ours is a very very famous college it it is ranked as a fifth college now it is a great privilege for me to say a few words in this webinar which is attended by famous personalities and students from various countries not to say about various i mean uh, departments and states and our speaker himself is from an african nation really makes us proud that this is going to be a great success because the topic is very timely there is no point in talking about something that has gone by there is no point in talking about something that which about which we have no idea at all but right now when the world is give, gripped by this great pandemic when the 
when scientists world over are trying to find some solution for this pandemic this is the right topic i say this is the right topic that can be delivered at this point of time generally it is shown that all plants that shoots on this earth have medicinal value and there is no plant which has nil medicinal value this is what our ancients have expressed but the problem is knowing the composition knowing the percentage to which in in which the percentage in which they have to be mixed now this is a great challenge now plant bi plant biology uh, department has come out with this topic especially at this particular point of time with a vastly knowledgeable in this area he is very vastly knowledgeable dr sharavanan so i really really am happy to inaugurate this seminar i hope we will come out successfully we had lot of pandemics and we have come out with great medicines with, uh, with which we have eradicated them now it's time that we are to come out with such a medicine for corona virus now uh, at this point of time it is but befitting that dr sharavanan has accepted our invitation so he has been invited that is the advantage of plant biology department so i congratulate the hod of the department the other staff members the organizing secretary and special words are for the iqac team of our college which is really really brilliant and especially to dr abdul rahim for giving this technical support i hope that this is going to be a very successful session and we will be benefited immensely i thank you all and i inaugurate this webinar really really i am thankful to every one of you thank you thank you sir thank you very much and uh, before moving uh, to hear the effective words from dr saramanand sir somebody must tell about the saramanand sir so none other than the organizing secretary kritika madam yes sir yes sir a pleasant morning to one and all present here we have with us a pertinent speaker for today's international virtual conference to embellish and enhance the knowledge on novel biotechnological approaches to combat emerging diseases with special focus on sars associated coronavirus therapeutics i am absolutely delighted to present an ardent researcher of the scientific firmament dr saravanan muthupandian associate professor department of microbiology and immunology mikhail university mikhail ethiopia he has graduated in microbiology from madurai kamraj university and is a doctorate from satyabhama university with a specialization in medical microbiology and nanomedicine during 2011 2012 he worked as a post doctoral researcher focusing his research on nano biomaterials and their biomedical applications under the israel government post doctoral research fellowship and the institute of drug research faculty of medicine he has published more than 130 research papers in various peer reviewed and highly impacted journals like nature and lancet with an impact factor of 41.5 and 59 respectively he has also attended more than 100 national and international conferences uh, workshops invited talks he is also the editor and the guest editor of many peer reviewed journals which are under the pubmed plus one global lancet global health infectious diseases which are all with a high impact factor right from 2 to 19 and above that he is he to his credit he has been honored with many international um, awards fellowships and grants to name a few iet nanobiotechnology premium award the dst scrc research scientist award the for the research contribution from the srm university and so on and so forth to just to name a few he also has to his credit a uh, number of citations google scholar shows that he has the citations of more than 4953 with a h index of 55 and an i10 of 67 he is completed a uh, few of the research projects which amount to more than 70000 usds and also a dst scrb project of 20 lakhs with an on hold he has about 70000 usd research uh, project available with him 
he has his field of expertise is in medical microbiology immunology nanobiotechnology nanomedicine polymer controlled drug delivery he also has a technical expertise in immunological and cell culture microbiological molecular and bioanalytical techniques to name a few sem tem afm xrd ftir rt pcr elisa in vivo animal models for nanotoxicity and immunoelectrophoresis and chromatography just to name a few this was a brief bio sketch of our speaker so with this introduction may i invite our speaker dr saravanan muthupandi over to you sir so good morning one and all present here so i would like to thanks to the well known college in india uh, invited me for this uh, virtual webinar conference i would like to thanks to the respected principal sir he is uh, present virtually as well as respected head of the department and the convener of this uh, one day international virtual conference and the organizing secretary dr n kritika i would like to thank special thanks to organizing secretary she invited me through linkedin linkedin uh, i am not know before she invited me i accepted for her invitation through linkedin as well as uh, she sent me some information through mail it's a really i am very proud to be stand here virtually for this well known college in india particularly presidency college he produced many well known alumni in india particularly nobel laureates and bharat ratna so i come through it's only 80 years old college so it's a really amazing experience you are invited me thank you one and all you are invited me to organizing this well very interesting conference during this pandemic time i would like to uh, thanks to the audience so their overwhelming response i have many uh, uh, professional groups i forwarded this information to many professional groups including linkedin research kate as well as social network like facebook and also there there uh, many overwhelming response so the organizer also to forwarded this in information to throw the cloak so including my student also attending this conference from ethiopia many international national participants attending for this virtual conference organized by presidency college this team the presidency college so uh, this uh, thank you so much for the organizing secretary as well as uh, the convener and principal and uh, the technical support team providing me these opportunities so i'll go for my presentations today just you have to check this uh, your screen it's visible sir we are able to see the screen sir so i i going to present today my presentations mainly focus on this pandemic uh, time it's uh, it's really in, uh, in the history of uh, infectious disease the first time in the history there is within a short span of time the virus transmitted throughout the globe within 4 to 5 months 220 it infected it affected 220 countries and more than around 10 million infected individual up to now and also 500000 death it's a, there is urgently needed some therapeutic approaches it's emerging therapeutic approaches urgently needed to combat this pandemic as well as to eradicate for covid 19 many researchers throughout the globe they are doing research day and night and bring out some successful treatment option for this invisible enemy particularly covid 19 i today my topic i going to present today my topic novel biotechnological approaches to combat emerging diseases with special focus on sars associated coronavirus therapeutics these are the content of my presentation background and significance of my presentations i can give you clear significance on overview of my presentations including emerging and reemerging infections emerging infectious disease and their global impact novel biotechnological therapeutics approaches to combat covid 19 and recommendation and take home messages 
so most of the time my presentations always uh, it's uh, inter it's, uh, it, it's interactive presentations this webinar presentation is not possible anyway if you are having uh, after my presentation if you are having any queries and questions please raise in the hand as well as i ready to give you the answer this uh, before going to the presentation the background information what is the infectious disease the infectious disease is not a single country problem you know very well it's a uh, recent time the it's uh, it uh, causing uh, glo public health, global public health problem throughout the globe particularly this uh, emerging virus covid 19 it's uh, you have to see this infectious disease is not a single country problem that's why all the researcher and uh, this uh, leaders and uh, this uh, technical scientific leaders are taking initiative to control of this pandemic this uh, you see how to think about this infectious disease some of the infectious diseases the severity and magnitude mortality and morbidity slowing down some of the infectious diseases the severity magnitude mortality and morbidity growing up what the reason behind this then that's uh, i'm not able to get you the answer but i hope to give you my answer the reason behind this those are the infectious diseases the morbidity and mortality slowing down we have the appropriate treatment options for the controlling of these diseases particularly some diseases like polio measles and smallpox etc we have the appropriate appropriate vaccine treatment options to control these infections particularly polio we have the treatment option vaccines so most of the countries in throat the globe's already eradicated the become polio free countries including india and also some countries only there is a incident small incidents in some african countries and some of the infectious diseases the severity and magnitude and this mortality and morbidity growing up because we don't have the rapid diagnostic approaches or we have, we don't have the the therapeutic option appropriate therapeutic option to controlling of these diseases because these diseases it's every time emerging and re-emerging and to changing the molecular and cellular nature of this the nature of the infectious disease it's very difficult to contribute within as soon as possible to develop the new therapeutic option for the treatment of these diseases anyway the global scientists taking initiative they're doing research in day and night to controlling of these type of emerging and re-emerging infections uh, particularly for track resistant multi track resistant mdr as well as some emerging diseases emerging infectious viruses like covid 19 and re-emerging viruses like Ebola, etc. So I want to give you this antimicrobial resistant. I'm not going to talk about, discuss about antimicrobial resistant, but even though I want to give you this uh, WHO and CDC recommended, uh, this in 2050, after 30 years, this uh, antimicrobial resistant, it leads to cause 10 million death every year throughout the globe. In this, in this 10 million, around 9 million from Asia and Africa, because this uh, African and Asian countries are developing countries, it are causing more infection in uh, Asia and Africa, particularly um, this antimicrobial resistant. This emerging and re-emerging diseases like COVID-19 and Ebola, you know very well about Ebola, the recent time, 2014 and 15, it causes the infection, particularly West African countries like Guinea, Sierra Leone, etc. It uh, killed more than 12,000 people within a short span of time, two years. And uh, also the recent outbreak, that name is called as COVID-19. As well, this, uh, in this century, there is a four emerging outbreak. So during 20th century, the century before 21st, uh, the emerging infections appear every 15 to 20 years. For recent centuries, 21st centuries, the emerging infectious diseases, so some of the infections emerged and uh, it uh, emerging appear every five years or 2.5 years. For example, the 2002, 2020, we have 20 years, within the last 20 years, there is a four emerging infection appear. In 2000, there is vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus emerged from st uh, methicillin resistant because there is, we have the treatment option for methicillin resistant only vancomycin. Now, the microorganism, the bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus, to become resistant to vancomycin. There is no treatment option available for the treatment of this particular bacterial infection. But uh, in 2002, there is uh, one more emergence appear, SARS. 
There is SARS also emergence. We saw the newly identified virus in China in 2002. It spread 37 countries within seven to eight months. At the time, this uh, SARS virus is the first virus spread throughout the globe around 37 countries within a short span of time. It's a record of SARS virus at the time. Now, the recent time, after this emergence, that maybe there is one more emergence up here, that name is called as MERS virus, and one more emergence up in MERS virus, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus, as well as Jika virus in Brazil, and also the recent time, so COVID-19 in the uh, end of 2019, uh, end, uh, end of December 2019, there's new virus emerging in Wuhan, China. It spread throughout the globe within a short span of time, four to five months throughout the globe. It's the first uh, the history of infectious disease. It's a very uh, speed of spread throughout the globe. It leads to cause pandemic and also to make us the global population public to make us to stay in home as well as there is a lot of economic and other uh, losses, other losses as well. It's, it leads to cause more than 10 million populations and uh, it uh, killed uh, more than 500,000 people up to now. In India, in the state, in the stage of India, it's every day we are receiving uh, around 15,000 positive cases. Uh, it also uh, increasing day by day, the incidence of uh, COVID-19. This emerging and re-emerging diseases, I want to give you some of the emerging and re-emerging diseases. Already I, I told you some of the emerging diseases. Uh, this uh, 2000 to 2020, there is poor emergence. Most of the emergence mostly for genotic viral diseases, particularly the SARS virus, MERS, Jiga, as well as now there is COVID-19. And uh, this uh, emerging diseases, uh, it's uh, what in the emerging diseases? Emerging diseases are newly identified previously unknown infections uh, that causes public health problem either locally or internationally. This is uh, this, uh, the definition of emerging diseases. For example, I told you there is a four emergence appeared this year. The recent emergence, it are uh, very pathetic. It has spread it throughout the globe within a short span of time, that uh, COVID-19. The re-emerging diseases, the infectious disease that have been known for some time, had reduced incidence so, to such low level that they were no longer considered public health problems and are now showing upward or high incidence uh, and also prevalence worldwide. For example, that's a re-emerging, well-known re-emerging disease. The recent time, 2014 and 15, is Ebola virus. Particularly, is re-emerged and uh, it's spreaded, uh, particularly mostly it causes the mortality and morbidity and mortality in uh, in West African countries like Syria, Leon, uh, et cetera, Kenya, et cetera. This, um, the emerging diseases, for example, in 20th and 21st century, there is so many emergence appeared. So particularly some emerging diseases in uh, 2000 to 2015, so 2000 to 2020, there is four emergence. I already explained about this emerging uh, antimicrobial resistant bacteria, vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and uh, SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome virus, and uh, 2015, Jiga virus, 2019, COVID-19. I want to give you here, so what is this, the impact of this uh, emergence and re-emerging infections? The impact is not only uh, for uh, economic class, as well as it able to kill the people, particularly because the emerging microbial microorganisms, we don't have the appropriate treatment options for eradicate this type of emerging viruses, uh, particularly this MERS virus, so SARS virus, it emerged in 2012 and it killed an around 10,000 people, in the, particularly in China and also 37 different countries. It, this is the first virus transmitted around 37 countries because this 2012, there is a lot of transportations, the easy to, the travelers easy to go for one country to another countries, countries within a short span of time. And also MERS virus, Middle East syndrome virus, it killed around 8,000 people. And also Ebola virus, uh, this uh, recent, it is uh, one of the uh, re-emerging virus, it killed more than 11,000 death, 12,000 around 11,000 to 12,000 death, as well as some other uh, viruses like uh, genotic viruses, avian flu, H1N1, H1N5. So every year, this, uh, there is a 
it's not only single country problem. This emergency is not a single country problem. It's a global pro problem. Uh, uh, within a short span of time, this particular emerging and re-emerging infections, it spread it throughout the globe. For example, some of the viruses we are categorized into newly emerging because this viruses, this back, normally this back infections are not identified before, is newly identified. This uh, first, uh, the recently identified virus, COVID-19. Uh, it will spread throughout the globe. Under re-emerging viruses, it appeared uh, maybe uh, 20, 30 years before the incidence, uh, it lowered the incidence during this uh, recent time and further it re-emerged and uh, causing infections. The emerging and re-emerging infection, it need urgently needed new therapeutics. It's already available therapeutics. It's possible to use as a supportive treatment, but uh, if you want to eradicate completely, it's needed for new therapeutic option, development of new therapeutic option for the treatment of these viruses. And one more thing, uh, the global threat is uh, deliberately emerging infections, particularly bioterrorism. The bioterrorism, you know very well, this uh, uh, invisible microorganism using as a weapons to destroy the communities of populations. Uh, so many different uh, uh, things happened during the time uh, bioterrorism, particularly for anthrax, this uh, uh, this uh, mainly they spread it into U.S. during the time of 2000 to 2005. It killed many people. This uh, actually we should. I have to give you this here. Uh, we should use our technology only for constructive purposes, not for destructive. It's uh, uh, all the audience and uh, the professors and uh, uh, as well as the students uh, uh, listening my things. We should use our technology only for the constructive purposes, not for destructive. We should not use for this microorganism, invisible creature, for destructive purposes, only for constructive purposes. So I'll give you here uh, this uh, emerging of uh, source-associated coronavirus. How this emerged? It's, you know, very well the origin of this virus, source virus. It's uh, normally the coronavirus is uh, coming under the family of coronaviridae. Its origin of virus identified from bat, but uh, the intermediate coast is very from the virus, one virus to another emerged virus. For example, the SARS virus, it, uh, the, the, the origin of this virus, coronavirus from bat and transmitted due to the molecular and uh, uh, cellular mechanism, it uh, changes the characteristic transmitted to intermediate coast, the SARS virus intermediate coast is severe gate, and uh, how it transmitted to the humans because of the diet or close contact with animals, it will transmit it to humans. It leads to cause uh, infections and uh, causing high mortality and morbidity. As well as the MERS virus, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. It also one of the emerged virus. It's the intermediate coast for this virus is camel transmitted to the human through close contact with mucus or fluids as well as uh, its uh, diet. Yeah, the that second, third, this recent emerged virus. It uh, uh, it's also origin from um, or, originated from COVID. It also originated from bat COVID nineteen source COVID two. It's the the intermediate coast is unknown till now, not identified which one is uh, is intermediate coast to transmit it to humans. It's unknown. Uh, so actually, this intermediate coast uh, should have the ACE two receptor because the coronavirus only to attach to the ACE2 angiotensin uh, and cleavage enzyme receptor. It only attached to the receptor entering into the host cell to multiply to produce uh, many number of virions, uh, the progenic viruses. Uh, but this, uh, normally this uh, SARS-CoV-2 is not, uh, the COVID-19 virus, the intermediate host till now not identified, but it may be uh, identified soon. But it also transmitted to human, it leads to cause the infection, the first, uh, uh, there is virus uh, identified in Wuhan, China, and transmitted throughout the globe within a short span of time, more than 220 countries. Because this recent time, many travelers and uh, many uh, export and import uh, for, of animal uh, and other uh, materials to the glo globalization, due to the globalization, it will be transmitted throughout the globe within a short span of time. So what are the driving force of forces to the emergence? The driving forces, the microorganism, uh, it's different type of uh, driving forces responsible to become the microorganism to emergence. Main driving forces, the environment, 
the main driving forces is the environment and other driving forces pathogens and also host cell so what is the environment so recent time so globally there is a deforestation and converted into urbanizations constructing industries and other things due to the deforestation and converting all the forest to the construct uh, the uh, all the forest to the uh, industries uh, to uh, as well as the farming land converted into uh, uh, buildings due to this some, some microorganisms to emerge uh, to become emergence as other pathogenic factor the pathogen itself it involving different molecular and cellular mechanisms to become um, uh, to become highly emergent highly pathogenic as well as highly virulent and including for the genetic exchange of microorganisms as well as the antimicrobial resistance okay and also the cost factor the so different type of cost factor response will the microorganism to become emergent so most of the things are nutritional status of the coast and travel uh, travel this is uh, the coast mainly for humans the traveling throughout the globe within a short span of time uh, may be possible to transmit this invisible infection to one country to another countries it possible to, as well as population density so population density also it uh, it uh, it all one of the factor to easily transmit the infection to particularly like covid 19 to one individual to another individual uh, and also immunosuppressions the immunosuppressions also responsible so one more things uh, the immunosuppression individual are highly susceptible for most of the infectious diseases including for this emerging and reemerging infection including for um, diabetics blood pressures as well as other uh, like uh, hiv aids etc uh, as, as well as chemotherapeutic uh, drugs also reduce the uh, immune immunity of the coast as well as and one more things very important the carrier the sum of the sum of the individual the coast uh, it's a uh, carry the virus as uh, carry the um, the invisible virus it uh, does not show any sign and symptom it also it's uh, it uh, it uh, act as a uh, healthy carriers to transmit the infection to the uh, the immunosuppressive individual that the susceptible coast cell it also these are the main uh, uh, driving force to make this microorganism become emergence so next one these are the the recent emergence i told you sars virus 2002 and 2003 it uh, it uh, spread it through the globe it uh, leads to cause uh, around uh, 10000 death and uh, it has spread to 30 countries within 7 to 8 months this first time at the time the first time in the history within a short span of time the genotic viruses the sars virus spread to uh, more than 30 countries 78 month is a history of at the time infectious disease history says so a reason that on mers virus it only infected the individual from uh, middle east uh, respiratory uh, syndrome virus coronavirus it uh, infected from middle east it originated from Mid middle east and spread to some of the european countries as well as american south american countries and uh, this is a recent outbreak this is a very important virus it leads to cause pathetic situation throughout the globe it's highly it's a global public health problems it has spread it throughout the globe within a short span of time more than 220 countries infected 10 million populations and killed 500000 people okay this a uh, this a uh, first time in the history it uh, this single virus spread it very uh, very short span of time um, more than around 4 months 4 to 5 months it able to spread it throughout the globe more than 220 countries is the first time in the history of infectious disease so i want to give you here this support uh, the infectious disease expert meeting conducted by every year who i have getting opportunities one uh, two three times to the director general of who world health organization has warned emerging infectious disease is an increasing serious threat to global public health problem that requires action across all government sector and society this uh, you know very well this uh, who lead by two developing country peoples particularly uh, who who head the director general of who dr tedros adhanom and cabro jesus from a um, working country ethiopia is from ethiopia the same city 
I am living here as well as he studied also the same university. I'm working there. And uh, yeah, and the deputy director general and chief scientist, Dr. So she's become now chief scientist of WHO, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan. Two, these two leading the developing country people leading this WHO, they well known about uh, the global issues, uh, particularly developing country problem. They're taking a lot of initiative to eradicate for this type of emerging and re-emerging infections, uh, as well as controlling of this emergence throughout the globe, particularly in developing countries. So I want to give you here this one of the very important things, the thought about uh, the global leaders before the, the infectious disease mostly causing devastated infections or uh, more morbidity and mortality, particularly in developing countries. But this coronavirus reversed the history of this uh, impact. It uh, caused first, uh, it uh, started from China, transmitted to uh, European countries as well as America. It leads to cause severe damage, high mortality morbidity in developed countries compared to developing countries. But developing countries also now started to uh, increasing day by day the, uh, the, the, mort the mortality and morbidity and infection rate increasing most of the developing countries including India, Brazil and also other developing countries. Okay, that's, that's why it's urgent need for the development of uh, therapeutic, novel therapeutic tool, novel biotechnological therapeutic tool for the treatment of this type of emerging and re-emerging infections is more urgent and more vital. This, I want to give you my talk, uh, it's a main, mainly about main focus on coronavirus, SARS associated, that the SARS COVID-19 or coronavirus. The COVID-19 is a family of coronaviridae. It uh, normally, uh, it able to, this, now the intermediate coast, this uh, main coast, the initial coast from bat, but it's intermediate coast not yet identified. It, uh, how it transmitted to human also not yet identified till now. This uh, COVID-19, it able to, uh, spread throughout the globe within a short span of time. Uh, it uh, causes high mortality and morbidity and also easily transmissible and it leads to cause the high mortality uh, to the elder people as well as some people having underlying diseases like uh, diabetics, blood pressure and uh, AIDS and immunocompromised individuals. This, uh, I want to give you here, so what is the structural characterization of this virus? The coronavirus, COVID-19. Already, so many researchers they already sequenced and identified the structural characteristics of virus. This coronavirus, because this is a coronavirus family, the coronavirus name is called as the spikes proteins. It's look like a crone. That's why the name is called as coronavirus. This coronavirus contain the very different. The, the, there is a uh, the, uh, this uh, structural components including spikes proteins, nucleic acid including the protein as well as nucleic acids. It contains positive sense RNA genome and membrane proteins envelope and RNA, that RNA viral genome. This RNA viral genomes, it's a positive sense RNA viral genome. It, once it enters inside the human coast, it easily produce RNA dependent RNA polymerase. After RNA dependent RNA polymerase to synthesize the complementary strand of RNA to produce other uh, type of proteins. Here, I want to give you here, there is this virus, it contains different types of proteins as well as it's very important enzymes. This uh, gene, the open trading frame won't be carried out the enzymes responsible, this gene responsible to produce the enzyme during the replication inside the coast cell RNA dependent RNA polymerase. And also the spikes proteins, so it consists of uh, envelope protein, membrane protein, as well as nucleic acid proteins. Okay, the spikes protein, it's a very important uh, protein, it responsible to the attachment of the receptor site present in the human lungs, particularly ACU2 receptor. So I'm uh, giving here this, um, this how it, uh, this, this virus, it multiply inside the coast cell. How it multiply? This virus, uh, it's a, yeah, I told you this, uh, uh, it's an enveloped virus. The, actually, this, uh, there is a two different types of virus. One is NACT virus and enveloped virus. So most of the time, the NACT virus are highly resistant, uh, but the enveloped virus are highly sensitive, all the environmental changes, in, even environmental uh, uh, characteristics. But this enveloped virus, it's a unique virus, this COVID-19, it's a very unique virus. It's enveloped virus, but it's resistant to all the environmental uh, changes, including uh, the temperature, as well as 
all other uh, characteristics because it's uh, one of the novel virus it have highly resistant to all the environmental changes um, uh, as well as this uh, spikes protein able to attach to the ace2 receptor present in the lung cells once it attachment appeared this uh, virus penetrate inside the coast cells and release the single the single stranded positive sense rna genome and the single stranded positive gens rna genome uh, it involving ribosome to synthesize directly for rna dependent rna polymerase then replicate to produce uh, the negative sense rna genomes this together positive and negative sense rna genomes to synthesize many different type of um, the uh, coronaviral proteins including membrane protein envelope protein and also the nucleic acid positive sense rna nucleic acid once it assemble uh, uh, once it's assembled inside the coast cells it released from the virion the progeny virion released outside through endo exocytosis mechanisms this enter through endocytosis and uh, this uh, released through exocytosis mechanisms okay these are the one of the replication pathway for uh, coronavirus how it enter normally this virus it uh, attached to the, the receptor site specific receptor it present in the lungs as well as other parts of the body including liver and kidneys etc that's why it leads to cause multi organ failure i can give you the detail this virus sars coronavirus it's the origin of this virus from bat but uh, till now we are not knowing the intermediate coast the intermediate coast uh, should be contain the ace2 receptor maybe either bat or swine or severe cat etc the mouse it's not a uh, possible to intermediate coast because uh, there is no ace2 binding receptor present in the mouse uh, but this once the virus enter inside how it enter inside it contain the spikes proteins the s protein spikes protein attached to the coast receptor ace2 uh, the ace2 receptor highly abundantly present in the uh, lung cells lungs this uh, after attachment uh, it able to uh, penetrate inside the cell through endocytosis mechanisms it involving different factor responsible during the penetrations the s1 and the s2 uh, uh, the uh, spikes protein 1 and uh, spike protein 2 the spike protein 1 determine the virus coast range on cellular trophism spikes protein 2 to mediate the virus cell membrane and uh, this also other unknown molecules present in the virus uh, it involving as a cofactor to penetrate inside the coast lung cells okay the, till now they not identified what is the other unknown molecule uh, responsible for the penetration uh, inside the coast lung cells the virus uh, penetrate inside inside the cells the coast factor uh, what are the coast factor responsible the sars cov2 receptor it's very important the uh, co coronavirus it uh, able to attach to the receptor site because the human contain the receptor that name is called as ace2 receptor angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor uh, once attached to this receptor what will happen it easily penetrate uh, the process name is called as endocytosis penetrate inside the cells the individual who are more susceptible for this virus viral disease mainly for elderly people greater than 60 years old as well as some people with underlying diseases including for diabetics blood pressures cardiac diseases as well as immunocompromised individuals as well as that uh, uh, cancer patients as it what will happen once enter inside our immune system it act against the virus it uh, able to destroy the virus it able to produce different type of cytokines the cytokines leads to strong the uh, uh, lung cells it uh, causes the inflammations due to the cytokine storm the patient the infected patients to become uh, not able to respirate properly they're getting difficult to breathing uh, that's why we are using different type of supportive treatment uh, uh, this there is no uh, the direct treatment option available for eradic eradication of virus or can controlling of virus or destroying of virus but we are using different type of supportive treatment and given by different uh, uh, organizations uh, rep supported by recommended by who cdc as well as the health ministry of the particular countries the this uh, this underlying health condition that increase the susceptibility of these virus multiplications inside the coast cells it leads to 
uh, mainly for these underlying diseases like hypertension, chronic uh, pulmonary disease, including asthma, diabetic, cardiovascular diseases. So severe complications, it leads to cause respiratory distress syndrome, septic shock, metabolic acidosis, and coagulation disinfections, multi-organ failure. Finally, it leads to cause multi-organ failure. Why? Because multi-organ failure, because not only for the lung cells of the humans contain ACE2 receptor, and also other cells uh, contain the ACE2 receptor site. Because this uh, once the virus multiply inside the lungs, it release outside to the bloodstream, reaches to the other receptor site present in the other organs, multiply, it leads to cause cytokine storms, and um, it's a major, mainly it leads to cause multi-organ failure. This, uh, these are the things, uh, it's a, how it enter the virus. The virus entry, you know, very well, everyone, we are wearing the mask because uh, we have to prevent the entry of virus because different organization, WHO, CDC, as well as health ministry, local health administrator, they're providing the uh, clear uh, information, uh, guidance to the people, communities to prevent the uh, prevention of the virus. The prevent uh, prevention is better than cure because we don't have the appropriate treatment option for the COVID-19. That's why government insisting and uh, the health ministry insisting as to uh, prevention of this virus. Particularly how it enters its end, the virus entered through the nasal or oral route, reaches to the lungs. The lungs contain the receptor, ACE2 receptor, and this uh, spikes protein attached to the ACE2 receptor and uh, penetrate inside the lungs and uh, multiply using the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, uh, as well as it multiply to produce many uh, progeny virions and release outside the uh, lung cell, it circulates into the bloodstream. Once it enter, ins enter inside the lungs, it attached to the receptor site, penetrate inside the lung cells. What will happen? Our immune system also activated against for this virus. It uh, involving for different immune mechanism, antigen presentations, as well as cellular and humoral immunity. This immune system, what will happen? Uh, it activate against the virus. It uh, produce cytokines and the cytokine strong uh, in the lungs uh, to damage the lung cells. That's why most of the patients to feeling uh, they're uh, difficult to breathing, difficult for breathing. This once we are getting either immune system, it activates to control the virus. Those are having high immune power, uh, they're able to eradicate this because it's able to eradicate the virus. They become normal as soon as possible using the supportive treatment available in the market. Uh, those are underlying diseases, uh, they will it leads to cause high mortality and morbidity because the cytokines are strong. It will not tolerate, possible to tolerate. Okay. And the one more thing, this, uh, what is the diagnosis mechanism of this virus? Once enter inside, show the sign and symptom, uh, the, the people, the infected individual uh, should go to the, the COVID-19 uh, facilities and laboratories. They will, go, they will collect the samples and uh, do for diagnosis, particularly that uh, uh, sample, but if there's diagnosis mainly we are using for RT-PCR, ELISA, and point of care test. High thought put screening also they're using most of some uh, high level laboratories, but common that uh, this uh, golden standard method for the diagnosis of COVID-19 available, uh, this name is called as RTQ-PCR. It's 99.99% for sensitivity result it provide. And also the point of care test also available for the point of care test, it will provide only for 35 to 50% positive predictive value, positive result. For example, we already exported some of the, particularly in India, we exported different type of uh, uh, this, uh, point of care test, rapid test kit from China as well as uh, South Africa, uh, so South America, sorry, China as well as uh, uh, South Korea. And uh, this China, uh, the rapid test kit is not work out properly. That's why government stopped uh, because uh, it produced less positive predictive value or positive result compared to RTQPCR. That's why most of the government to recommending to uh, diagnose this, uh, uh, the, the name is called as uh, uh, the, the gold and standard method for the diagnosis of COVID-19 for RTQPCR. This uh, pathogenesis, I already explained the pathogenesis mechanism, how it enter uh, this virus attached to the receptor site in AC2 receptor present in the lungs and penetrate, uh, penetrate inside the cell through endocytosis mechanisms and multiply once multiply, what will happen? So our uh, uh, that normally our immune system activated against this virus. It produces many amount of cytokines. The cytokines that are strong 
It leads to cause uh, lung injury, including pro-accident, pro-inflammation, vasoconstriction, vesicular leakage, and pro-fibrosis. And this antioxidants, uh, that's why we are using different types of uh, drug. It is uh, possible to prevent the receptor site, as well as we are using different type of supportive treatment options, including hydroxychloroquine and um, other uh, uh, supportive treatment available, dexamethasone recently introduced, as well as Fevi Blue, they recently introduced by mild and uh, uh, moderate uh, COVID-19 infections, uh, uh, introduced by Klinmark. Uh, this, I want to give you here, the, the SARS-CoV is that normally this virus, I told you already, this virus was well, able to point to the receptor site, AC2 receptor, present in the lungs, but also other um, human cells contain the ACE2 expressions. Once enter inside the human and reaches to the lungs, attached to the receptor, ACE2 receptor, penetrate inside endocytosis, multiply. Uh, after multiplication, the progeny virus release outside and circulate in the bloodstream, reaches other organs like kidney, small intestine, and testes. The kidney, small intestine, and testes also contain this receptor for the multiplication of this virus, penetrate inside and multiplication of this virus. This um, understanding the cellular uh, molecular mechanisms, the understanding the cellular and molecular mechanism. For example, it's very difficult. Uh, it's uh, not possible to go for directly for the therapeutic options. We should know the molecular and cellular mechanism of uh, this virus, how it uh, uh, attached to the virus, or what are the mechanisms it involving for the penetrate inside the cells and multiply after multiplications. What are the me molecular mechanism involving uh, to uh, the spread throughout the uh, post system that without understanding it's very difficult to develop and of new drugs that's why we should understanding the cellular and molecular mechanism of covid 19 it's useful for the development of new drugs so all, everyone now asking why they are not developed the scientists is not able to develop the uh, new therapeutic options as soon as possible for the treatment of this drug okay it's a very difficult if you are first if you want to uh, develop the drugs you should understand the molecular and cellular mechanism of this covid 19 uh, it will take minimum uh, four to five months, six months. There are already, it, because this is a global problem, public health problem that's we throughout the uh, globe, including the developed countries and developing countries taking initiative to, for the development of new drugs, novel drugs. This uh, drug development is not an easy task. I can explain easily with the theoretical representation. If you are going to work in the laboratory, you will get all the difficulties. Okay. This first, we have to identify the target selections. We have to target select the target because you know very well the cellular mechanism of the virus how it enter the target you maybe you have to target for um, ace to receptor to prevent the attachment of this virus then once we prevent we have to develop the novel therapeutic option for the targeting for the receptor binding or a blockage of receptor it's very easy to initiate it uh, able to eradicate this virus that's why the target selection is very important we have to go for either uh, blockage of receptor or you have to uh, prevent the replication pathway of the virus inside the coast cell. That's why you have to select the targets, selections, and you have to go for lead discovery, you have to isolate the compound and go for lead discovery, do the assay screening and configurations, and also you can go for lead optimizations. So you have to improve the potency and selectivity and bioavailability of the compound isolated from different sources, including uh, plant sources, uh, but mainly for we are using for a recent time for plant-based drugs uh, because uh, less side effect, more biocompatible, as well as it destructs the virus, uh, less uh, uh, side effects to the human coast. That's as well as we could go for the preclinical developments. Uh, once we identify this uh, lead optimization, identify the compound, it's able to work out in the animal studies, you can go for scale up the compound formulations, we can go for in vivo studies, including animal models. After in vivo studies, it will show some compound or positive or a highly productive result. Then we'll go for clinical trials. The clinical trials, uh, after clinical trial is approved by this drug, approved by FDA and coming to the market. So I told you this uh, drug development is not an easy task. Uh, if you want to develop particularly for the emerging and re-emerging infectious disease, particularly emerging disease like COVID-19, but it will take time. If you are isolating the 10,000 compound uh, in a, from the source and preclinical level 250 compound eligible, uh, get eligibility, then clinical trial five compound, maybe one or two compound, finally you'll go for uh, human trials, 
clinical trial one, two, three, as well as one, one compound may be it approved by FTA for the treatment option for the um, emerging infectious diseases. This, uh, I want to give you here today, so my focus, some novel biotechnological approaches. What are the novel biotechnological approaches, emerging approaches possible to, for the development of uh, COVID-19 therapeutics? This novel biotechnological approaches, throughout the globe, many researchers, many laboratories, and uh, there's a collaborative uh, laboratories, institution, they're doing research in this, uh, this, this, these are the approaches, mainly for, they're using for vaccine development approach. I can explain detail, as well as they're using other approaches like emerging uh, nanotherapeutic approaches to combat COVID-19, nanotherapeutic approaches they're using, emerging antisense RNA technology. It's possible for development of antisense RNA technology. This is one of my idea, possible, it's possible, yes, it's possible to prevent the entry of virus, we prevent the multiplication of virus inside the lung cells on truck repurposing approaches is a commonly we are using most of the government and uh, the authorities, health authorities, including WHO and CDC recommending some of the drug possible to use for the supportive treatment, not for a control of or eradication of this virus. So vaccine development approaches and the conversion plasma based therapeutic approaches and traditional medicine approaches, traditional medicine, because many countries, many developing countries supporting for traditional medicine approaches to prevention of this virus. Uh, it's not able to control, so it's not able to cure the infection, but it's possible to prevent prevention strategies. So I want to give you for nanotherapeutic approaches, the nanotherapeutic approaches to compact COVID-19. So because most of the research I'm doing here, uh, as well as we, I done my postdoc, this is mainly for nano carrier drug delivery for either drugs or vaccines or therapeutic uh, nucleic acids. So mainly we are using different types of nano carrier uh, uh, is act as a vehicle to transport the truck, to deliver the truck into the target site and destruct the microorganism, emerging microorganism. Because this is why they're using for nano carrier to delivery system. Uh, it act as a carrier to deliver the truck only in the optimum amount uh, to destruct the microorganism specifically. It will uh, reduce the side effects. Particularly that we are using for polymeric vehicles, including uh, that's a mesoporous silica nanoparticles, dendrimer, liposome, and virus-like particle. So mainly our research, mostly in my, during my postdoc, as well as some of our uh, collaborative laboratory, we are doing for research in polymeric, that name is called as biodegradable polymer. It's act as a vehicle to carry the truck and coated with the ligand. The ligand, it able to attach to the target site to deliver the truck is appropriate amount and destruct the microorganism, they may destruct the infectious agent. This main, main focus of our uh, research, uh, uh, we are doing most of the things we are doing here in as well as Israel and other collaborative laboratories. So this, uh, what are the possibilities? This now, what are the possible with nanotechnology for uh, therapeutic approaches, development of therapeutic approaches for COVID-19? So you have to see here this, uh, we have to encapsulate the trucks because the drug is not developed up to now for the specific treatment for COVID-19, but we are using some supportive, drug, supportive, supportive treatment. Most of the supportive treatment option available highly side effects, including uh, hydroxychloroquine and uh, some antiviral drugs we are using. It's highly side effect. It leads to toxic to the human coast most of the time. So less uh, toxic to the human coast. But uh, if you are using for this, for example, if you are taking 500 mg of uh, hydroxychloroquine, it reaches to the target maybe for 10 percent, 10 mg, and the other 490 mg it circulates in the bloodstream. Uh, it leads to cause side effect for uh, uh, other organ present in the human coast. That's why we are using this technology. We have to encapsulate uh, the truck and uh, coat it with the ligand. This ligand only attached to the specific receptor of the uh, uh, receptor. It able to uh, release the truck and uh, to destruct the microorganism, particularly emerging microorganism. This same approach possible to use for the COVID-19 because we, we know very well, we already known the mechanism of multiplication inside the host cell, the COVID-19 mechanism multiplication, replication cycle. Uh, it's able to attach to the ACE2 receptor, this uh, deliver the, uh, to, to penetrate inside the host lung cells. That's why we have to develop the drug. It's able to block the receptor, or it able to attach to the receptor, deliver the truck, 
through the receptor and destruct the COVID-19. It's possible, there is a possibility for the development of nanotherapeutic drugs. Other uh, therapeutic drugs are na particularly nanomedicines for lung delivery system, future nebulizer therapy. Because, so we already known this virus, it may be, uh, it may be stay for long time, long duration throughout the globe. That's why we have to develop alternative therapeutic options like uh, nebulizer therapy, or uh, like we are using different type of uh, therapeutic approaches for um, that the asthma patients, uh, that uh, name is called as Prasra, there's a uh, yeah, nebulized, nebulized therapy and also other therapy. For example, the nanomedicine for lung delivery system, future nebulizer therapy, it, we are using different, the, it possible to use the future polymeric nanoparticle and micelles, long shelf life modified surface properties, and nanoparticle loaded inside the target to the lungs, that name is called as Stortian Gotts microparticles, solid lipid nanoparticles, more biocompatible for lungs delivery systems, solid, because the solid lipid nanoparticle, more biocompatible, it able to, it does not cause any comb to the coast cell, it circulate into the bloodstream and reaches to the target site. And also liposome also they're using liposome uh, control drug delivery mechanisms so maintain optimal physical properties after nebulizations. This, for example, I told you the inhaler. So we are using different type of inhaler therapy for uh, particularly pulmonary infections because this virus also it attached to the lungs. It uh, multiply inside the lungs. Uh, the patient will get difficult to care the, the sign and symptom most of the time. High fever as well as difficult difficult for breathing. That's why it's possible to develop this inhaler a type of uh, nanoparticle, nanocomposite nanoparticle material. It's uh, um, against for coronavirus. It, uh, this material we have to develop with already available drugs or we have to uh, develop the novel nanocomposite drug material for the treatment of this virus or we have to use the nanocomposite material, the, uh, the polymer material like polylactic acid, polyglutamic acid, uh, et cetera. This is a biocompatible material. It does not cause any harm to the human coast. It acts as a carrier to load the drug in, inside the carrier and uh, coated the drug with ligand. The ligand attached to the target site and release the drug to destruction of the microorganisms. So these are the approaches possible. Maybe the, the future approaches, approaches for the development of inhaler uh, or tri powder or uh, vaporizer. Uh, to the to the lungs for the treatment of for COVID nineteen coronavirus because this virus it will be stay maybe stay another six months to one year. So next one for these are uh, these are the main uh, approach for this nano therapeutic drug nano composite material to deliver the drug into the lungs to destruct the coronavirus. This second, second op opportunity option for the um, uh, novel emerging therapeutics, that emerging anti-sense RNA technology. You have to see here, this is a single standard positive sense RNA, the virus content, COVID-19 contains in, this positive sense RNA directly to able to synthesize RNA, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So now what we have to do, this uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase action, it's possible to develop the anti-sense uh, positive sense COVID-19 RNA, you have to synthesize the oligonucleotide, complementary strand of oligonucleotides to the positive sense RNA of the COVID-19. It are able to block the translation to produce uh, for, it able to block the translation. This, well, those are the gene responsible to produce RNA dependent RNA polymerase enzymes. This enzyme, very important enzyme, uh, it able to multiply the virus multiply inside the coast cell. That's why we have to plug this enzyme production, the translation mechanism, we have to control the multiplication of virus inside the coast cell. That's why it's possible to develop under antisense RNA technology against COVID-19. The next one, truck repurposing approaches. The truck repurposing approaches, there is various truck recommended by uh, the authorities. So we should uh, take as a treatment option uh, only for those are the representative health ministry or health uh, individuals. So health as uh, our CDC or WHO uh, recommending drugs. There is a uh, recommending supporting supportive drugs. These are the supportive drugs recommended by uh, different authorities, CDC and WHO as well as other agent uh, able to control the 
uh, spread of this virus, uh, control the infection of infections, or to reduce the mortality of the uh, infected individuals. Particularly, they're using for hydroxychloroquine, the first drug recommended, supportive drug recommended. This uh, drug normally is able to bind to the ACU2 receptor to block the receptor site to prevent the entry of virus. This is a main mechanism. But this uh, drug is highly toxic to uh, that, um, you know, particularly the patient. Uh, underlying diseases uh, patient like uh, uh, the diabetics as well as cardiac patients, particularly heart, cardiac patients. That's why it leads to cause uh, high toxic toxicity. But why they directly recommended for this repurposing drug? Because already available drug were already recommended by the FDA for different treatment options. Uh, for this drug uh, have less side effects are uh, already passed through the biocompatibility and uh, the biostability of this drug. That's why they're recommending many different drugs up to now. Uh, there is a part mainly for hydroxychloroquine and uh, some other drugs like uh, anti-retroviral drugs like lepinovir and uh, remidesvir, etc. The lepinovir and remidesvir, most of the time, the lepinovir is able to uh, prevent the uh, uh, production of the enzyme RNA RNA polymerase. As well as remdesivir, it able to destruct the mechanism of RNA dependent RNA polymerase. These are the most of the. Uh, the actually, there is a many uh, virus positive sense RNA virus present in the nature. We have the different treatment options. RNA, uh, sorry, there's a positive uh, treatment option available. We are using the treatment for the prevention of the multiplication of this virus. There are also this also the treatment not complete eradication of this virus. So next one for the recently the uh, they recently they uh, introduced for tech uh, dexamethoxone. The dexamethoxone is a uh, drug used for mostly used it's a, it, it, it's a corticosteroid. It are mainly used for the patients. Uh, the, we, this uh, drug mainly they recently recommended supportive drug. Uh, it's able to reduce the lung injury as well as cytokine, cytokine stroke. That's why they recommended for this drug for the treatment options. Other drug like uh, recently in India, they introduced Glenmerc, uh, Febifravir. Hello. Yeah, listening my voice? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please continue, yeah. sir. Yeah, I'll continue. Yeah, I'll continue. This, uh, this recently, so India also uh, they introduced uh, some company, Glenmerc. They introduced the drug for the supportive drug, supportive treatment, mild and uh, uh, the initial stage of treatment with Febifravir. This also one of the antiviral drugs. Uh, have the mainly main mechanism it able to prevent the multiplication of virus inside the lung cells. There, there is a, only we have the supportive treatment drug. We don't have the uh, specific drug for the the individual unique drug for the treatment of this virus. That's why the, throughout the globe, many researchers, day and night, they're doing research and uh, they try to develop a new drug or new therapeutic tool for the treatment of this virus to eradicate this virus, to eradicate this pandemic uh, situations. So there's another approach they're using for emerging vaccine development approach. It's very, very important, the vaccine, once we develop the vaccine, it's possible to eradicate the pandemic throughout the globe. These are the many researchers throughout the globe, more than 30 different research groups. They're doing research in vaccine development approach. This vaccine development approach, they're mainly using different approaches. They plan to use it whole virus. The whole virus, it's a, it's a virulence. That's why they use it for killed virus, using chemi chemical treatment or other treatment options to kill the virus. This killed virus, the only lose the, the, the virulence capacity not antigenicity. They killed the virus used as a uh, treatment option. They're going on uh, clinical trials and also attenuated virus. Attenuated virus, the virulence genes they removed, virulence uh, material they removed and uh, attenuate the virus. It able to induce only immune response in the, inside the post cell. The viral, the virus approach they're using. The second approach for vaccine development, nucleic acid approach. The nucleic acid approach, uh, they're developing and of uh, using nucleic acid. Uh, uh, the different type of the viral it's a vector to deliver the vaccine into the post cell nucleic acid uh, it acts as a positive sense RNA genome is act as a we plan to use it as a vaccine for the treatment of this virus they have to remove cut and remove the 
wetlands genes and uh, only for non wetlands genes to induce immunogenicity they will use for nucleic acid based vaccines and viral vector vaccines this recombinant viral vector vaccine different researcher they doing research for this uh, viral vector vaccines this viral vector vaccine they using uh, is a vector you know, to carry the uh, gene to deliver the um, uh, gene to the host cell it induce immunogenicity different type of recombinant viral vector vaccine also under clinical trials as well as protein based vaccine so many researcher around more than 25 different research group they using for protein based why because the protein the particularly spikes protein of virus it's present in the outer layer uh, it look like a spike uh, the spike protein uh, only it able to it's uh, able to attach to the receptor site present in the lung cells the ac2 receptor that's why many researcher they wants to develop for this spike proteins Uh, to development of vaccine protein based vaccine protease uh, vaccine or spikes protein vaccine development that's why there is a they are using four different approaches it's going on underway some of the vaccines are clinical under clinical trial some of the vaccine already failed for the during the development stage that's why we expect for this vaccine maybe four to five months or it may be take for one year uh, uh, i hope so Uh, throughout the globe there is a, these are the things the whole virus there are many researcher around five research group they doing but it's not a much uh, uh, positive result viral vector vaccine it's showing more positive prominent result for clinical trials a nucleic acid based vaccine also moderate result and protein based vaccine showing prominent result maybe the viral vaccine uh, covid 19 viral vaccine it will come to the market soon as soon as possible forms the uh, clinical trials over um, most of the time for protein based uh, um, vaccine for the treatment of uh, covid 19 okay we all are we all are should try for the development of this vaccine so at least as um, developing countries most of the developing countries we are only utilizer we are not producer uh, more mainly for the developed nation producing the uh, treatment options we are utilizing the options but we should change the this attitude next at least next generation next uh, forthcoming years we have to do research and we have to develop our own indigenous vaccine for the treatment of this virus anyway it's india also doing lot of research relevant to protein based uh, vaccine developments uh, this next one for convalescent plasma based therapeutic options the convalescent plasma based therapeutic options uh, its name is called as convalescent plasma come from the donated blood from the donor who leaves who have survived the virus themselves uh, some of the patients are infected the virus due to the in, uh, immune uh, response and capability it able to uh, produce immune immune response to destruction of the virus those are survived from these viral infections we have to take the blood donated blood we have to get the donated blood from the uh, survived individuals uh, we are using as a, we have separate the plasma this plasma used for the treatment of the severe severely infected individual particularly this uh, option only the some uh, you know some in india also some of the state recommended for the convalescent plasma therapeutic for the treatment of uh, the critical case cases infected individual to save the life of the covid 19 patients this is one of the approach is going on but it is not recommended up to now by cdc and so let only a show um Uh, next one for traditional medicine approaches the traditional medicine approaches throughout the many uh, developing countries they are following for these approaches particularly in india also this traditional medicine approaches uh, it enhances the immunogenicity of the the particular host enhances the immune system uh, that's why we are using traditional approaches but it's not able to destruct the virus maybe block the entry of virus or it enhances the immune system our immune system it activated to destruction of the virus that's why so various uh, approaches including for the government of india as well as uh, ayush as well as that um, tamil nadu government recommending for different type of traditional medicine approaches for the controlling of this viral spread as well as uh, to eradication or to controlling of this virus prevention of this virus uh, virus is but it's not a Uh, appropriate it's a, it's a appropriate treatment option it's not a treatment option complete treatment option it's a supportive treatment supportive therapy only the next one for uh, that actually the different type of uh, uh, available supportive treatments including for 
the first introduced first year of the recommended for chloroquine and different type of uh, uh, antiretroviral drugs also they are using for the supportive treatment and also sometimes the severe cases we are using remdesivir and caparin the caparin some some patients the anti coagulatory agent like caparin some patient uh, the uh, uh, the actually the post mortem report showing for the blood clotting mechanism this virus also is a, this viral mechanism till now not identified most of the mechanism some mechanism they identified some mechanism one of the mechanism they identified it also clotting the blood that's why they are using for caparin to uh, dilute the uh, actually caparin as well as corticosteroid some corticosteroid we are using to uh, to reduce the cytokine storm as well as other convulsion plasma this convulsion plasma corticosteroid caparin we are using for severe and critical cases of covid 19 cases to save the life of the patients so i coming to here this uh, what are the things we have to consider if you want to develop new drugs this uh, mainly for uh, we have to consider the route of administration what what type of route of administration we have to introduce the drug for deliver the drug to destruction destruction of covid 19 or drug properties Drug properties should not have high side effects. It should be biocompatible and uh, uh, also uh, less toxic. On biocompatibility, we have to study for the drug biocompatibility as well as duration of delivery, as well as nature of delivery vehicle. Also, we have to use how the most of the time for nano drug we are using biodegradable polymer acts act as a delivery vehicle to deliver the drug into the target site, the, as well as ability of targeting. what is the ability for example the ability of targeting that's why we are coated some ligand the ligand attached to the target site to attach uh, to deliver the drug uh, it also reduce the side effect of the human coast as well as mechanism of the drug release how it mechanism it's either shrink the drug deliver the drug in optimum that's why we are using different type of delivery mechanism it's a controlled drug delivery mechanism using nano drug delivery approaches they are going on so mostly we are focusing on for nano drug delivery using our uh, laboratory as well as uh, the, our uh, collaborative laboratories throughout the globe so for example if you want to do research for covid 19 so those are listener and uh, professors we should have at least for bio safety level 3 laboratories without bio safety level 3 laboratories we should not go for research particularly covid 19 because it's a highly contagious easily transmissible to the individual individual to individual also easily transmissible that's why uh, you should take care you should uh, have if you want to do research every, everyone having interest to do research but we should have the appropriate facility if you want to do research in the covid 19 uh, scenario so we need at least uh, Uh, this bio safety level three or four bio safety at least bio safety level three laboratories to uh, do the research any uh, bio efficacy studies or bio compatible studies otherwise you have to uh, synthesize the compound you have to send the compounds you should have the collaborative laboratories you have to synthesize the compound you have to check the efficacy send to different laboratories including us uh, we have the bio safety three laboratories facilities and we have to do the efficacy against for the covid 19 uh everyone not possible to do the covid 19 research because we need you need the sophisticated bio safety level 3 laboratory facilities otherwise you may be infected as well as you are transmitting infection to other individuals so next one these are the take home message from my presentations uh, this um, the development of novel therapeutics for the treatment of covid 19 is more urgent yes because we are struggling lot throughout the globe it's not only for india uh, and other all other countries throughout the globe more than 20, 220 countries struggling lot the more than it every day increasing uh, uh, is now, now around 10 million population infected for covid 19 they estimated after 2 to 3 months it reaches to 20 million uh, but uh, this every day it increasing the incidence of uh, infection in covid 19 is only options you have to develop the novel therapeutic tool a uh, novel therapeutic treatment for the covid 19 is more urgent we need to develop the novel therapeutic for covid 19 for working together it's not possible to develop we have to think of most of the developing countries the developed countries will develop we should do we, those are having the facilities they should start or those are not having the facilities we have to collaborate with other researcher we have to start to do the research for uh, development of novel therapeutic for covid 19 by working together so no action today no cure tomorrow anyway we are not having the cure 
for COVID-19. But if you are not taking right action today, there is no cure tomorrow. Maybe it will stay lifelong. The COVID-19 will stay lifelong. It's able to kill many people, mortality, morbidity for many years. But we should develop, once we develop the therapeutic option, appropriate therapeutic option, it's possible to eradicate as soon as possible for this newly emerging disease. These are my uh, applications, references. Uh, also, we have published one COVID-19 paper. It's available online soon. So these are the collaborators throughout the globe, uh, including uh, Washington University. I would like to thank, as well as other collaborators from throughout the globe, including WHO, World Health Organization, because I am uh, most of the time the World Health Organization are giving me sponsor to attending different type of uh, conferences, training program through in Geneva. The last seven years I'm traveling to Geneva, uh, sponsored by World Health Organizations and also other researchers throughout the globe. These are recent uh, 2017, say 18, uh, I attended the uh, conference and uh, the antimicrobial resistant conference in Geneva. Um, uh, these photos, next one for, so any queries, you all are welcome to give queries as well as I'm ready to give answer. Thank you everyone for your overwhelming response as well as more than 400 participants from Zoom, maybe some participants they're attending in uh, YouTube also. Thank you so much uh, for uh, attending for this web, international web conference and listening my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Now, uh, Kritika Madam will actually... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kritika Madam will summarize the questions received in the chat box. Then, because we are running short of time, if time permits, let us go for the participants to ask the questions. When they raise hand, we will ask them to unmute. Then they can ask if time permits. First, uh, Kritika Madam will uh, consolidate the uh, chat box questions to you, sir, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the nice presentation. There are quite a few queries which has come regarding the COVID-19 that we are facing now, actually. There is one from Dr. K. Mutupandi who says that understanding these interactions in highly pathogenic coronaviruses, such as SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV, may enable the design of small molecule inhibitors of these replicate process. Your opinion. Yeah, that's actually I said already for this SARS-CoV and the MERS-CoV as well as COVID-19. This uh, origin from animals, genotic, particularly PAT, the intermediate cost is very. This inter normally this virus, it's uh, specifically able to attach to the receptor site present in the human coast, uh, particularly ac to receptor. This coronavirus mostly contains spikes protein. The spikes protein able to attach to the receptor present in the, particularly the ACE2 receptor present in the lungs. It's able to transmit this virus to the human coast. But it's very interesting question this because it's possible to develop novel uh, uh, small tricks, small material, novel nanomaterial to block the receptor site once uh, ultimately microorganism not penetrating virus entry. Once they uh, prevent the entry, there is no uh, worry about that. Yes, sir. The next question, um, this is about the, uh, does the death ratio of corona vary from country to country and any climatic reason or strain with respect to it? Yeah, that's a very interesting <laughs> question. So, uh, I want to, this one, COVID-19, actually this is one of the interesting virus, novel virus, it's invisible. And this virus is a, uh, we are, we are all the virologists, including I'm the medical microbiologist. I am doing also vir virology research. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, all vir virologists throughout the world less sensitive to all the environmental changes. It's a, it's a, the, high, this virus, sorry, uh, high, high sensitive, high sensitive, all the environmental changes, including temperature and other uh, changes. Once, particularly the virus able to multiply inside the human coast, once coming out from the human coast, most of the enveloped virus, it will die immediately. It will not stay in the environment. But this uh, enveloped virus, coronavirus, it's uh, amazing. It will stay even 12 hours in the environment as aerosol conditions, as well as it also, uh, this, uh, because this virus, enveloped viruses are highly sensitive to the environment. We thought 
this virus it will not uh, attack or it will not steal channel it's now second hot spot in india because it's high temperature high now this uh, maybe the temperature around 37 to 40 degree temperature this most of the enveloped virus will die but this virus is uh, one of the unique characteristics it is able to withstand all the environmental changes that's why it will that's why it is able to spread it throughout the globe including uh, the country like very cold countries european countries as well as uh, and very hot temperature countries like india there is no the, till now we have to go for identification what is the, the general character how it withstand the high temperature even low temperature very low temperature okay. research any questions thank you sir there's another question by no, lavanya no, prada yeah, the yes sir there's a question yeah, yeah, by lavanya okay. prada who asked that why is it difficult to find a component that can avoid the binding of coronaviruses to bind to ACE2 receptors of human, and why is this bad? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, uh, because this, there is a different type of drug available. That's why we are using different many drugs for supportive treatment. But uh, this uh, one thing, uh, this virus, it easily transmits from one individual to another individual. Some individuals, uh, once enter, penetrate inside the uh, human coast, reaches to the receptor particularly ACE2 receptor. But uh, very interesting, this one, it's possible to, why we are not able to develop the new therapeutic drug for the blockage of this receptor. Okay, it's going on research. Maybe it's available. Uh, there's many researchers doing development of novel drug for the blocking of the receptor site for the prevention, the entry of the virus. Maybe we will, uh, uh, I, I hope the indigenous drug, already many drugs are already available. We are using as a supportive drug. But there is no indigenous drug for the development for the COVID-19. Maybe it, it will be available within a short span of time. I hope so within four to five months or one year. It will take uh, throughout the globe. A lot of research is going on in that. Any questions? Any yes, other sir, questions? There was about by, from uh, Hyder Ali, sir, who wanted to know as what nanoparticle encapsulates the therapeutic medicine. Is it cyclophilic, mesophilic, or thermophilic? Yeah, that's good. Actually, this one, it's very important. We have to use this um, biodegradable polymer. It acts as a carrier. The biodegradable polymer, to coat it with uh, ligand, it reaches to the target. At maybe this uh, target, maybe the human body temperature is uh, 37. It's a temperature for the human body temperature is 37. That most of the time is a uh, mesophilic environment. The carrier, the truck carrier carrying the truck for the COVID-19, it able to release the truck in mesophilic environment because our body temperature is 37. Maybe we have to use only for mesophilic uh, carrier to deliver the truck to the target site, particularly uh, inside the human lungs. Uh, there was uh, actually there are a lot of messages which are poured in and the equations are just rising up. But I did see one question from Dr. S. Malati, who was talking about the plasma therapy is effective with the antibodies. Then what about the vaccines? Uh, yeah, plasma therapy, actually, is not recommended uh, therapeutic option by WHO and CDC. But the local government and local health ministry, they're recommending for critically ill patients, not for normal patients. Those are going to die. It's critically ill then we have to save the life they're using for this plasma therapy. Even though plasma therapy, it's, till now there is no confirmed uh, uh, information from WH1 CDC we have to use or not. But uh, I am not understand what is the next question? What is the question? In, uh, it, it's a combination oh, question that when plasma therapy has it with respect to antibodies, then why should we actually, what is the problem with the vaccines, development of vaccines? Yeah, the plasma therapy also, till now not 100% confirmed, uh, it's able to produce uh, uh, that antibodies against that particular virus, uh, the particular recovered patients. Maybe different mechanism they are involving from the recovered patients to destruction of the virus. It's a, maybe the antibody production also. But the vaccine development, uh, it's not an easy task because, uh, you know, the re-emerging virus uh, 2014 and 15 that the Ebola virus said last month, not after five years vaccine. But even though 
this is not like ebola because ebola only uh, infected for uh, african continents that's why is a, there is a less uh, uh, priority for the development of vaccine but this one it infected throughout the globe not only for developing countries as well as developed countries that's why they're doing a lot of research is going on for the development of vaccine but this vaccine we would identify actually it contain many different uh, molecular structure and uh, cellular structures which one we have to develop for example that's why they're using some you know, protein based vaccine they're using spikes protein they induce immune response against spikes protein once develop the spikes protein it possible to structure to structure the spikes maybe the antibodies produced by in once we developed but it's a lot of uh, research it's going on they have to develop the appropriate vaccine for the eradication of this virus it will take time minimum i i hope it will be 6 months to 1 year sure sir there is a very uh, common uh, question a kind of a doubt with respect to the covid 19 the who has recommended the uh burial of uh, the dead bodies of uh, with, who have been infected with corona virus why is it that they have not been incinerated according to our laws of uh, biomedical ways it is either to be autoclave or incinerated uh, any recommendation by who for uh, only how to go for burial or not for incinerations I yes, think there is no there is no uh, oh, I am not get it for this uh, information from WHO anyway I am updated but I will check it out but uh, this burial I don't think uh, the burial and the incineration it also it, the virus not uh, penetrate uh, normally the burial incineration is more than uh, burial I hope so because it is able yes, to test the virus normally it is able to stay in the environment for 10 hours maximum. Yes, yeah but, but i think it doesn't multiply in the dead bodies so i don't think it actually transmits from the dead bodies it will i hope it will not uh, multiply no, it, it doesn't multiply. yes yes that's oh, right yeah. sir uh, there are few of them who want who have raised hands uh, to ask you personally the questions i think there are just two of them at present now because i have posted many of the questions maybe we can open on or two of Uh, Perin ba madam, Perin ba madam wants to share something. Yeah, madam. Now Perin ba madam, you can unmute yourself and you can do it, madam. Ah, uh, yeah, sir, madam. this uh, uh, the question is the COVID patients. Uh, they say they get continuous cough. So yes. when will the cough get subsided? At what stage the cough cough get subsided? Ah, uh, yeah. Can can you explain, sir, regarding this? Yeah, this I want to because this uh, because COVID first stage the they get the fever. Temperature yeah. is high, and after some time, some days yeah. the temperature goes down, yeah. and then the cough is persistent. So, yeah. can you explain to me when the cough will cough will stop at what stage of infection and what stage of the viral load the cough will stop? Yeah, that's very good question. Very uh, good question. So, the virus normally enters through the oral or nasal route, reaches to the lungs, and point to the receptor. Once yes. point to the receptor, reaches to the Uh, that uh, normally it involving endocytosis mechanisms to penetrate inside the lung cells and multi there is a viral multiplication appear once the viral multiplication started maybe it will take for one or two days it will uh, rise as the temperature it is increasing the temperature uh, once the viral multiplication started what will happen is uh, uh, our immune system it act against that viral entry as well as multiplications it uh, produce many cytokines it will the cytokines are strong the lung, lung cells due to the cytokine strong it inflammation occur that inflammation leads to make cough of the patients they due to the inflammation the immune system it strong the cytokine strong it leads to the inflammation due to the inflammation we are not able to uh, respirate enough amount of oxygen is not circulated in the lungs uh, that's why we are getting for cough and uh, difficult to treat it then uh, we have to use different type of supportive treatment to control this type of situations uh, there maybe it will be prolonged for 7 days one week normally for this virus then also this replicated virus the progeny virus released to the lungs circulate into the uh, blood stream reaches to other acu2 receptor uh, site and uh, multiply uh, to Uh, after multiplication what will happen the same things happens that's why it leads to cause multi organ failure particularly for the elder patients 
as well as that uh, patients, those are uh, having for particularly uh, elder patient as well as other patients like uh, cardiac patients, hypertensive patients, and uh, other immunocompromised individuals. It will take around the cough, it will be uh, stay for after the entry, two to four days to five days, it will stay. After one week, maybe it will go for other uh, problem. If the immune system not activated or the supportive treatment is not helpful for the patients, it will stay for 10 days. Only Madam, when Edwin Madam wants to ask some questions. Only two persons yes, are there, one the random Edwin Madam. Please, you unmute okay, your okay. mic. Yes, sir. Sir? Uh, hello, sir? Uh, yes. Polio virus. Hello, my question yeah, is so. po uh, polio virus is also positive sense yeah. strand RNA virus. Scientists have developed successfully in developing vaccine for polio. But why not for COVID-19? That actually the polio virus. Hello, sir. Yeah, that, uh, that is mechanism, that molecular mechanism. The molecular mechanism of entry and the pathogenicity mechanism is different from COVID-19, the polio virus. That's why even the polio virus, they develop vaccines after two years, I hope so, after the, the polio is introduced. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the polio vaccine introduced after 10 years, I think. The main people infected throughout the globe will become, mm -hmm. uh, now only we eradicate a recent time. That's mm -hmm. why it will, take time, it will take some more time to develop vaccine for COVID-19. But the pathogenic me pathogenicity mechanism, cellular and molecular mechanism, totally different from polio virus for this virus, COVID-19. Even transmission. So, Dr. Yes, Shokmani, yes, madam, yes. now you can unmute yourself and you can talk, madam. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon, madam. Yeah, sir, uh, you said that we can use nanomaterials as a, uh, a vehicle for uh, uh, delivering the drug. Yeah. For drug delivery, we can use nanomaterials. Yeah. Uh, usually, we use uh, silver nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles. Now, we use iron nanoparticles. Uh, when you talk about this uh, hmm, uh, bio nanomaterials, can we use uh, chitosan like that and all? Yeah, that's why this one, uh, particularly metallic oxide nanoparticle, we can't use it for internal applications yes. because it's highly toxic. Uh, mm -hmm. only for external applications. Okay. But I, I told you this one, we, are, we have to use for biodegradable nanomaterial. Yeah. That name is bio called biopolymer. Bio mm -hmm. The biopolymer material, it acts as a vehicle. It uh, carries the truck, but we need the truck. We have to load the truck. The low, but the truck is not available. Uh, if we have the supportive truck also. We have to load into the uh, cytogen or, um, okay. or PLGA, PLA and PLGA, polylactic acid, polyglutamic acid. Mm -hmm and also hydrogel based nano carrier. We have to deliver the truck into the directly, particularly in the lungs area, mm -hmm. because lungs contain the receptor, we have to deliver. The receptor, the, for example, we have to attach this, uh, we have to encapsulate, we have to use the truck as a carrier, encapsulate the truck inside and uh, coat it with some ligand. It's very important. Mm -hmm. The ligand should be reaches yeah. to the target, yeah. attached to the receptor site to deliver the truck into appropriate amount okay With my name is yeah. my question is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah my question is what what uh, what are the biomaterials that we can use for example chitosan from marine bioresource from prawn shell yeah. from anything, we get chitosan yeah. like that any yeah. other biomaterials yeah so we have to use for different type of biodegradable polymer like polylactic acid polyglutamic acid cytogen hydrogel as well as liposome carrier, the liposome also act as a carrier, exosome is act as a carrier, exosome also, because exosome and liposome, it already present in the human system, it will not cause any side effects. As well as we are using all the things biodegradable polymer, it does, it circulate in the bloodstream or the, in the human coast, it degrade after some times, it does not cause any side effects. Yeah. Oh, Uma, madam, please. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, as far as COVID-19 is concerned, there are three categories of people. One is not affected, one is asymptomatic, and another is symptomatic. Uh, my question is that these uh, symptomatic patients, they can be treated and so on. So the non-affected is, there is no problem with it. But those asymptomatic persons, won't they be able to sense that they are carrying those uh, viruses inside? Any mild symptoms that that particular person can uh, understand or come to a sense like that? 
yeah, that's uh, very important. I told you my presentation during the time, this uh, asymptomatic carriers are more uh, dangerous than symptomatic carriers. Symptomatic carrier, we can identify the symptoms, then they will go for treatment to prevent the transmission of this particular COVID-19. Asymptomatic carrier, because they have more uh, high immune system power, and uh, once enter the virus, it will not uh, cause any symptom, but it, they may transmit the infection. But uh, the asymptomatic carrier, there is no, I read out many papers, uh, uh, there is no sign and they, they're not able to identify because they don't show any sign and symptom. That's the problem. Even themselves, they can't be able to identify a virus enter inside or not. That's one of the big problem because they easily transmit, because these people are asymptomatic, and also easily transferred to the region, people the double individual, more than 65 uh, infections like hypertension. No more questions. Uh, even if there are any questions, let us send your email, email ID, sir. Then uh, let them chat with you in email uh, communications. Now, uh, over to Kritika, madam. Now, madam, you want to say anything, madam? Kritika, madam. No, sir. We'll just say the vote of thanks. Okay, okay. Now the formal vote of thanks, vote of thanks by our Kritika, madam, organizing secretary. Okay, madam, please. Good afternoon to one and all. Test and cannot not be seen or even touched. They must be felt by heart. Thank you is one such prayer among them. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks. With want of time, there is a line that is said, my gratitude is, a magnet, is of a magnitude loaded with infinitude. This line speaks a lot, but let me go ahead. I thank the Lord Almighty and bow my head in gratitude for keeping us all in We remain grateful to our respected principal in charge, Dr. O. R. Devanadan, sir, for gracing the occasion and delivering the presidential address. Thank you, sir. I wish to express my gratitude to the dynamic and inspiring head of the department, Dr. C. V. Chittibabu, sir, the convener of LDC 2020. He has been the leading light throughout the program. I acknowledge his dedication and motivation. Thank you very much, sir. I keep on record our indebtedness to Dr. Saran Pandian for enhancing our knowledge on biotechnological approaches to combat some associated coronavirus. Sir, you had taken us through a scintillating and informative session from origin and brief introduction of emerging and re-emerging diseases uh, through its transmission, the infection, and its eradication treatment with the not only biotechnological approaches, but also the traditional approaches. We also thank you for answering the queries in a very interactive manner. I thank you, sir, for sharing your uh, research work and opening up new vistas of research. As you said, technology is to be used constructively. You richly deserve our gratitude, and I offer the same. Thank you, sir. I acknowledge my deep sense of gratitude to all the dignified participants for being without the program. Words may not be capable of communicating our sense of gratitude for your overwhelming response and the patience of keen listening. Your involvement in today's virtual conference has made this academic event a form of knowledge sharing. Thank you for paying attention to the participation of this event. Thanks are due to faculty members of other college for their dedicated in this program. Thank you. Among the participants also I did find many of them are professors. Thank you. A special thanks to the professors for attending this session and also encouraging your students to be a part of this conference. Happy to note that the presence of large number of students and research scholars from all over the world are here. Thank you. I am obliged to Dr. Ab Abdul Rahim sir, IQAC coordinator, the head of the technical team, Presidency College, for providing the logistics. Thank you, sir, for your kind help that you rendered right from the creation of the Google Forms up to the production of the certificate. Thank you, the technical team also. A line of appreciation tuned with gratitude to all who have been promoting this event. This international conference, virtual conference, IV 2020, did not happen overnight. The wheels started rolling weeks ago. It required rigorous planning and a bird's eye for details. The primary goal of this conference was to bring together the academic fraternity and intellectuals on a virtual platform. Academic open up in a pandemic lockdown. This is the mantra of today's takeaway. Believe that the pertinent speaker has provided an in-depth insight as well as actionable and practical tools of methods and mechanisms on emerging and re-emerging diseases. 
I thank each and every one for your enthusiasm and positive spirit that helped us make the time productive and knowledgeable. A deep sense of gratitude and the thanks to every one of you. Sir, thank you. A kind announcement to everybody. The feedback link, I think it is open. Many of them have said that they have received the certificate well and good but still i would like to state that please fill the feedback form with care your name or uh, do not fill the pin code uh, check it twice and then submit for the certificate to be perfect thank you very much um, this is out of the way sir you can stop recording sir